Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I hear people screaming outside. I live near a really rowdy bar and this happens, so. Welcome back to my channel. Not a lot of people know this about me, but I'm really passionate about cooking. I cook a lot. I love cooking. Uh, I take it fairly seriously and I grew up uh, cooking for my family, cooking for my friends. I'm definitely the only person who can really cook in the family. The reason why I even wanted to start this channel was so I could share my recipes with you guys and just cook. And I literally haven't done that at all. Oh, also I have a hair mask in, so. I've not done many cooking videos. I've incorporated my steak and my chicken, I think, in a pasta salad and my vlogs, but I haven't done a strictly cooking in the kitchen with Paige. So here we are. So. If you follow me on Instagram, I have a few updates for you guys. So I have decided to go gluten free. Also, if you watch my last vlog, I talked about that I'm trying to lose weight. So I am five pounds over what I like being, which is totally fine, it happens. Especially when I'm drinking a lot, which I have been doing. So there's that, but there's also the fact that completely unrelated to my weight. I have been so bloated. I would show you guys a picture of my stomach when it's really bad, but it's honestly offensive. My stomach's rock hard and it looks like I'm literally pregnant. And it's not just like, oh, I'm bloated, like, oh. No, it's literally like absurd. Both my parents are doctors and I send it to them and they were like, uh, <laughs> you need to get that checked out. So I've decided I think that it's from gluten. Um, a lot of gluten is super processed. I don't think our body in general likes gluten and I think, it, I think it's really hard for our body to digest, especially mine. So I'm cutting out gluten and I'm also trying to be very low carb. Uh, I really want to get super fit again. I want to be super lean. I'm like starting to work out again. I'm doing a gluten-free diet, but, I, but also by being gluten-free, I think by default you end up cutting out a lot of carbs. So I'm doing that. I'm also not having very much sugar. Sugar, especially for women, it really messes with your metabolism. I think sugar is the biggest thing that we gain weight from. I, per I mean, that's just what I think. So I'm making changes in my diet and my lifestyle. So that is exciting for me. It's exciting because I feel like I'm just ready to start taking better care of myself. I love to cook and just being more aware, I really let go. I have always looked at packaging labels. I've always been very conscious and I just honestly haven't been for the past six months and I can tell uh, I'm not super comfortable and just, it's not a good feeling. So I'm getting back into things. So tonight for dinner, I'm gonna make something that I make. I So I've made this kale salad for years. So I'm gonna show you guys how I make my kale salad. The only thing I'm missing is dried cranberries which is fine, I'm gonna use carrots in it. I've kind of replaced the cranberries with carrots. Not that I can't have cranberries anymore. I just really like the carrot in the salad, it adds the sweetness to it. So I'm gonna show you guys the kale salad that I make and then I'm gonna make a steak. Um, I'm gonna make a steak and I'm gonna cook it a little bit differently than I normally would. I cook my steak kind of restaurant style on a skillet with clarified butter and I'm not gonna use butter because it is not as healthy, uh, but I'm gonna cook it the same way and kind of just show you guys that. Yeah, I haven't done a cooking video before, so kind of bear with me. But kale salad is easy to fuck up. A lot of people hate kale because they haven't had a good kale salad. And in order to make a good kale salad, there are definitely steps you can't skip, so I'm excited to share this with you guys. A lot of people like kale in restaurants, but not at home. So I'm gonna show you how to make kind of a restaurant kale salad at home. Oh, also completely unrelated, I already opened these. But these vegetable chips are really great. Um, not much sugar, not much carbs, they're just vegetable chips. They're a really good snack. I think an important part, I'm trying to be healthy again, trying to lose weight or just trying to fuel your body properly is getting rid of temptation. I can't have anything in the apartment, like junk food or shit, because I know I'll eat it. Keep healthy snacks you actually like in your apartment. Okay, so there are a few tricks to making a kale salad. Good. 
So this is the difference. I think the mistake that people make with kale salad is the preparation of the kale. I think that people buy chopped kale in that bag that's already pre-made and think that that's gonna be okay. It's not, I don't think. You need to get a head of kale like this and you literally have to single-handedly pick the kale. And the issue that I have with chopped kale that's pre-chopped already from Whole Foods or Trader Joe's or wherever you shop, they have them, is they leave in these stems. The stems are disgusting. So if you have something like this, you need to literally take a big bowl and really finely rip this apart off the stem in little pieces. So you're gonna already have chopped kale because you've literally picked this off just like this. So it takes a second, not gonna lie. So I will pick all this kale off, or as much as I want, and put it in this. And then after all this, I will go in again and just pull it apart. I like my kale pretty finely chopped. So that is the first step. So this is all I'm gonna do because it's just for me tonight. After I did that, again, I'm just gonna go in and kind of just pull all of this apart even more. So I'll tell you guys about the next step, which I think is equally as important. I am really into salad dressings. I make all my own salad dressings. And I think with a kale salad, it's super important, your dressing. So what I do is, is before I even do the dressing, I will put olive oil on the kale and I will massage it. Um, so I don't know how much time I have, but I really like doing that. It's a very important part of this. And when I make my salad dressing, I actually don't put olive oil because it's already all over the kale. So I'll show you guys that too. So I'm just gonna take olive oil and I don't go crazy, just kind of like that. I don't have exact measurements for any of this, which might be unfortunate for some people. <laughs> But so then I just take my hand and I massage it, I guess. So I will just take a handful and just squeeze it. If I didn't do this step, the salad would be shit. So don't forget this part. After this, I'm just gonna let it sit. I'm gonna start the steak and right before I have dinner um, or if I'm serving, I do the dressing last, but this salad that I make, I mean, obviously I throw in different things depending on what I have, but it's really a dressing kale focused salad. I don't love adding too much. I really think that when you have a really good dressing and you have well chopped soft kale, you don't need a ton of stuff in the salad. Carrots are really nice in it, but I don't add too much to this salad. You guys watched my favorites video for last month. I mentioned this pan. This is what I cook meat on. And this is what I'm gonna cook the steak on tonight. The most important part of cooking meat in general, across the board, whether you're making steak, chicken, anything, it is so important to cook at a very high temperature. The goal with steak, especially made on a stove at home, is to get your pan really hot because you want it to be more rare on the inside and kind of crispy, nicely done on the outside. And I think that a lot of people don't know how to cook a steak at home, so I hope this is helpful. So my best steak I make is a bone-in ribeye with ghee, and it's just covered in this clarified butter, and it's so crispy and so good. It's like this rosemary garlic thing. Uh, I'm not doing that today. I will still have that. Just, I mean, I'm on a kind of diet now, and it's it's not that I would still have that on my low carb diet, um, and I will still be eating that. I just am not going to tonight. During the week, I'm really trying to keep it super clean and healthy, uh, not too much fat. So I got a really lean cut steak. It's a strip steak. I'll show you guys. It's an organic, grass fed beef. And so what I'll do is I'll put olive oil in and then I'll just take a paper towel and kind of spread it over everything. So it's not just like too much excess oil. And then I'm going to turn this on high. Get this 
pot and I'm gonna season my steak. So here we have it. I will probably not finish this whole steak tonight, but this is a grass-fed beef um, steak, no antibiotics, no growth hormones, all good stuff. So I love this company. I'll bring you guys over here to season the steak. I'm gonna get salt, pepper, and then I'm gonna get garlic powder. And that is all I use on my steaks. Uh, sometimes, obviously I said I'll use fresh garlic and rosemary, but that's not what I'm doing today. A good amount of salt, pepper on both sides, and then a lot of garlic powder. Just kind of like a nice coating over everything. A lot of it burns off. Um, so you can kind of go crazy with it. I also just love the flavor of all this stuff, so. Another note is that steak cooks best at room temperature. I didn't have the opportunity to do that today, uh, but that's just something that I will do sometimes. So this is getting hot. I'm gonna turn it down to medium heat. I'm gonna wash my hands. Turned on my fan. So. I'm just gonna put the steak right on here and turn it back up a little bit. And don't touch the steak. A lot of people make that mistake. Do not touch the steak. If you want meat to be crispy, you want it to get nicely cooked, put it down and don't touch it. It will really be able to cook better that way. I don't really know why that is. Uh, but don't touch it. I'm gonna leave this for probably seven minutes and then I'm going to flip it. Okay, so we're gonna flip this. I like using tongs, but I still don't have any in my new apartment. So that looks great. I like the way that looks. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna leave it again for seven minutes. And yeah. Okay, so before I do the dressing, I'm gonna do the carrots. So how I've been normally doing it recently is I, is I take a peeler and I'll just peel a bunch of shreds into it, but I'm actually gonna do it different tonight. Uh, I, because I'm more in the mood for bigger pieces of carrot. So I'm just gonna cut it like this. I think I'm gonna get one more carrot. I think that how a vegetable is cut uh, makes a huge difference. Actually, I'm gonna do both because I feel like eating carrots like this shape, but I'm gonna do also the shredded. So I'm just gonna add those. It's really a carrot kale salad. I add some parm too, um, but, and then so I'm gonna add pine nuts, but I'm honestly not even going to do that tonight. I'm gonna add some cashews, I think, because that's all I have, and then parm, and then the dressing gonna peel this. So just peel off the first layer that's kind of dirty. Okay, so I just take this like this. I mean, it's kind of tedious, but it works. Now let's make the dressing. Okay, first take a lemon. Just squeeze a whole lemon into a little glass or a bowl, just fishing out the seeds. So I have the lemon juice. I'm just gonna add some pepper, salt, a little bit of garlic powder. And then I'm gonna add a little bit of Dijon mustard, just a very small amount. And then just a little bit of honey. Again, I'm trying to be less sugar, so the smallest amount. And then I'm just gonna mix it with a fork. Put it all over the salad. And I really like to toss my salads with tongs, but apparently I don't have any, which is very weird. I might have left them at someone's house, but I really like tossing it with tongs, but we don't have that right now. So I'm just gonna use what I have. Tossing your salad is so important, like really thoroughly tossing it. There's nothing worse to me than a salad that comes untossed. <laughs> it's literally the worst. So I really like to add hemp seeds to this salad, hemp parts, but we don't have any. I don't know what happened to them. I think I might have thrown them out because I was worried the mouse, I have a mouse problem. 
was getting into it, but I do have chia seeds, so I'm gonna sprinkle chia seeds on top. And then I'm gonna add some parm. I was gonna add nuts, and I honestly usually do add nuts, but I don't think I want any tonight. So I think I'm gonna hold off. I like fresh parm better usually. I usually have a grater and I I grate it. Um, but I already had this parm and I'm leaving soon, so I thought I'd just use this. So I'll just kind of sprinkle this in. And then I will toss it again. Hemp parts are so good in salad. Um, chia seeds will do too. I just like the texture, honestly. Okay guys, this is the finished product. I'm happy with it. And I always put A1 sauce on my steak. This is probably the most ratchet thing out of everything that I've mentioned. I just love A1 sauce and it is what it is. Okay guys, that's all. I'm gonna have this huge thing of water. Yeah, that's all. I'm leaving on the 24th. My trip with Revolve. I'm really excited about that. I have so much to do before I leave. But that's okay. I'm just busy right now in my life in general. And it's good. Ooh. I just might need help soon. It's getting to a point where I'm overwhelmed. I love you guys. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little cooking video. 